Hello guys and welcome back to another video about Palantir. So this is going to be a super nerdy video where we're going to dive deep in the woods of numbers and Palantir's bookkeeping. And I'm going to try to do my humble estimate for the Q2 outcome of Palantir because we are very near the end of Q2. And boy, are we in a lot of trouble when it comes to Q2. Uh, I'm going to tell you the good, the bad, the ugly. And again, this is for Palantir nerds. So if you're not into these, then you're welcome to leave the video. And if you you like this content please make sure you subscribe to the channel and you can check out the first link in the description box which is for our patreon page where you can support the channel from five bucks a month and uh, you can get access to a lot of the tables that we will be using in this video and you can get direct access to me and you get access to my eternal gratitude all right so let's get into the video so I want to show you this table that I made which was predicting the numbers of Palantir for Q1 this is Palantir's quarterly earnings from their bookkeeping you can see 2021 q1 q2 q3 and then q4 and this is the actual and this was my estimate so they disappointed on compared to my estimate because they came in lower the growth obviously year over year was 30 percent which was exactly as they guided for however they surprised on the adjusted operating margin i was thinking that they will do 23 percent and they did 27.29 percent so that was a nice surprise i actually tried to find where the heck i got the 23 number from and you can see it's when it comes to the, the adjusted operating income it's quite a difference it went instead of 105 million they made 121 million and my estimate was actually a decline compared to 2021 q1 and now it became an increase so that was a nice surprise however the increase was not as nice as it could have been because you can see their operating margin was 24% in Q1 and now it was 27%. What do we know about Q2? So we have the guidance from management and they are guiding for 470 million with a wide range of potential upside above their base case regarding geopolitical events and they are expecting a super bad adjusted operating margin. I feel that I make this warning a lot of times that a lot of the evaluations and models that you, you know, set up for certain high growth companies like Tesla, they're very much based on growth. And if the growth disappears from it, the, you know, your valuation gets torn into pieces. For example, in Tesla, if you take out the growth from the company, it's a $63 stock and currently today it's trading at $630 and I think it's crazy undervalued because there's this growth potential. So on Palantir, my major thesis is that they're going to be able to have a 25% operating margin. So obviously this is not a good sign. However, for the full financial year, they're guiding 27%. Did lots of videos about how annoyed investors are that they don't explain why this increase is going to happen my guess is that uh, it's because of geopolitical events and you know the war in ukraine and they are having breakthroughs in europe and obviously they can't really talk about this so this is why we have to use our imagination to figure out why this is yeah, and then you can see here that in long term they're guiding for 30 percent plus growth i expect this quarter to be really really ugly it's very, very hard to predict this quarter and we're in God's hands because I can imagine scenarios that this quarter can be even uglier. Uh, many of you in the comments have pointed out that, you know, Palantir has been getting a lot of contracts and, you know, ICE has, you know, continued its contract with Palantir. Then there was, you know, like they won UK contracts and and that's all good, but this major growth that we're waiting for, for now is majorly going to come from the Ukraine and the geopolitical scene and the company is dead quiet about this. So the questions that I have and, and they basically also said in the earnings call that they are doing unpaid work in hopes of getting paid in the future. So my question is, we have gotten these pictures when Daddy Carp went and met with the Ukrainian prime minister. And as we know, Daddy Carp is the main and the best sales person of Palantir. So when he visits a country, he means business. So the question is, when do the payments start trickling in? Because I'm 100% sure that 
they made business deals on this visit. But, you know, it's governments. Ukraine is dead broke and is reliant on, uh, you know, basically donations from EU and US. And as far as I know, the US has sent 40 some billion dollars. The EU is sending. Just my question is time wise, like once the decision is made to send the 44 billion, how much time does it take to pay it out to Ukraine? And then how much time does it take for Ukraine then to pay it back out to Palantir? And does it all happen in Q2? Because if it doesn't, this is why I'm saying we're in God's hands and it's crazy hard to predict this quarter, then it could be that we even see a lower operating margin because Palantir is doing a lot of work helping the Ukrainian government and war effort and they're not getting paid for it. And I guess they will maybe get paid in Q3 and that's why the margins will be super high at that point then i think when the numbers come out again we're in god's hands depending on what happens in ukraine if it is according to management forecast then the adjusted operating income is going to be 94 million us dollars which is a big drop a 20 plus percent drop compared to q2 2021 and in this market and in this macro, it's just not going to look good. So the only saving grace that Palantir can have is if they would provide very clear guidance of, you know, what's happening and how they're going to make up for this in Q3 and Q4. But as we know, this lovely company, they provide everything but clear guidance and, you know, transparent data to investors to understand. So I have a feeling that this is going to create another buying opportunity where we will be able to pick up stocks for, yeah, in the fives and sixes, possibly. I'm sorry to break this to you. It can also be that, you know, the major upsides happen. You know, Ukraine got the money, they start paying Palantir and then they report a 30% operating margin which would be a fantastic upside, but I don't know. I just don't want to be banking on that. So this is one part of the Palantir earnings. Then, as we know, they have substantial stock-based compensation. If we go again with management guidance, so we have the 94 million and we have to count back to get what their gap numbers are going to be. And I was thinking, looked at their graphs and, you know, the stock-based compensation has been going down. So I went with, I don't want to bore you with the details of how I came to this, but I came to 140 million in stock-based compensation and 7 million in taxes regarding to this. And now we come to the real ugly part. So we all know that Palantir has made SPAC investments and uh, this is all the SPAC investments that they had in Q1. And this is my estimates of how much money they were going to lose. And clearly I was very pessimistic because I was thinking they would lose 79 million. And in actual fact, they only lost 62 million. And I wish I could tell you that Q2 is better, but um, this one is also super hard to predict because... Palantir continued to buy specs, which I actually didn't see any YouTubers cover. Very interesting. I went through their papers and this is, I was looking at, okay, trying to find in their bookkeeping of how much money they lost. And then I found this purchase of marketable securities for 89 and a half million. And I was like, is this the loss that they made? And then I was like, no, it shouldn't be under purchases in the cash flow statement. And I was like, how can this be here? And sure enough, you know, I was digging more into it and they couldn't resist the urge and they bought all these companies in 2022 Q1 despite them saying that you know this program has finished in Palantir and they would not be buying more SPACs and some of these SPACs have had eye-watering losses so to not make it too uh, negative uh, they are basically saying that in 2021 they went into agreements with companies and these purchases are still from the old agreements. So it's technically true that they did finish the SPAC buying program, but this was, I guess, contractual obligations that they carried on. And they did make some sales, but they don't specify here which companies they have sold. So I have no clue. I added all the SPAC companies that they have here. I looked at their stock charts and again, some of them are eye-watering like this fast radius they invested 20 million dollars in and they invested it in at ipo price let me just find it for you here we go fast radius so they invested here then the stock became public and 
Currently, it's trading at 44 cents. They bought it at $10. If you have ever seen money being burnt, this is what it is. This is, and they have a few that was like this. Basically, all the spec investments are down. And again, this is what is going to look horrible when the numbers come out there. As you know, there's a lot of algorithmic trading. My estimate is that they're going to lose $105 million that they have to take impairments on in their balance sheet. And if you add everything together, then you take the 94 million and then you, you, know, you take away all the losses that they're going to have. So they're going to have a gap loss of around 130 million in their bookkeeping, which is again, a horrible number. And as there is a lot of algorithmic tradings, I think, you know, when the headlines will come out from the earnings, it will be, you know, that Palantir is going lower on uh, quarter over quarter adjusted operating income and has a increased gap loss. And I can just see the headlines being horrible and probably the stock is going to be down, I don't know, 10, 20%. And I wish this wasn't true. I mean, no, actually I, I'm happy it's true because I do think that the long-term thesis of Palantir is intact. I have $32,000 waiting to be deployed. And as I said in many videos, it's between Tesla, Palantir and Netflix, they are in a race to win our money. Who gets to their price targets first? And Tesla is doing very good. I want to get it in the 500s, maybe in the 400s. But I believe after the earnings call, Palantir will be there also. So this was the video. Let me know what you guys think. Am I too pessimistic? Are you ready for this hit? Or do you think this is already priced in? I myself don't think this is priced in and the macro is just horrible. So let me know what you think and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.